by Dan Schinder here on Drum Talk TV here at the Canopus booth at NAMM 2013 with Frankie Benali, an icon in not just rock drumming or heavy metal drumming, but really in the music industry going all the way back to the 80s with Quiet Riot. It's going to be one of my biggest questions, but I'll, I'll sneak it out right now. 30 years of Quiet Riot. Can't wait to hear what that's all about. But some other really interesting insight to Frankie's career and some other things that he's involved in. First of all, hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. So nice for you to take time to meet with us here on Drum Talk TV. I really appreciate it. Hey, you're great, and you've got a great show, great channel, great drummer, so I'm happy to be a part of this. Thank you very, very much. So I I'm going to ask you right off the bat, what is it like being um, years old uh -huh. and saying, wow, I've been doing this with Quiet Riot for 30 years. What's that? What do you feel when you think of that? Well, it's pretty amazing because on, on one hand, and it's like, where did the time go? I mean, it, it just so much evaporated. On the other hand, I've had such a wonderful life with Choir Riot and with so many of the musicians and other bands that I've played with that it's a blessing. And to still be doing it 30 years later and to still enjoy it, uh, it that's, that's a wonderful uh, thing to be able to say that I can do. That, that's such a testimony to longevity. And speaking of longevity, you know, I, I hope you take this as a compliment when I say that in some ways, like the band, yes, Quiet Riot has been somewhat of an institution as far as different great musicians coming in and out of the band over the years. And with all of that, 30 years later, like Frankie said, the band still has such amazing stay power. And I think maybe more than ever right now. I mean, you're reaching different generation. The music industry has changed a little bit. And we'll talk about that as well. But I mean, w would you agree that that's not a detriment, but part the history is part of the success, if not a lot of it? Yeah, we've been very fortunate to have, you know, iconic songs like Come On, Feel The Noise and Metal Health Bang Your Head that have uh, stood the test of time. The other thing that's been really helpful is um, with, with the VH1 classic shows, all of a sudden they started playing the videos that MTV stopped playing a number of years ago, and we started getting a, a different demographic of audience, a younger audience. Uh, and then also with the internet, you know, you can reach a lot more people that way. So, I mean, there's pros and cons with the internet, but that's definitely one of the pros. That's good insight, and you know, the, the internet, like you say, has opened up a whole new world. Um, and a lot of people that follow the show in my audience, we exchange notes back and forth about, we're able to do things that we weren't able to do in the early 70s. I started playing in 1970, and I couldn't pop up YouTubes of people like Max Roach or Lionel Hampton or Papa Joe Jones or Louis Belson or Gene Krupa. Now that stuff is everywhere. Is there a drummer like that that you occasionally or even routinely like to tap into and look at some material that wasn't available when you were young and started out playing? Pretty much just about every drummer that has influenced me. I mean, I, I pretty often uh, continue to check videos of Buddy Rich. Uh, definitely Tony Williams is one of my all-time favorites. Max Roach. Uh, and then, you know, some of the progressive guys like Carl Palmer and Bill Bruford, and it's all out there. See, the difference is when I first started playing, if I wanted to find out about any of these musicians, I had to get a subscription to Melody Maker in the UK. And it took forever to get it to America. So by the time I got the news, the news was three, four, five, six months old. But at least it, it was called olds instead of news. Yeah, exactly. And then they were really talking old school. Now it's immediate. And, and things keep popping up, so it's wonderful. And I, and I check out a lot of the stuff that I, uh, on Choir Ride itself, you know, to see how things are sounding, how it's progressing. So, you know, it's, it's a great tool. That's great. 